Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this. It's my little custom coin that I'm gonna be taking to Vlogger Fair this year. I'm actually gonna be handing them out to a lot of vloggers because I'm gonna be running the 3D printing booth there this year. And I thought that you guys would get a kick out of seeing something be 3D modeled from scratch and ultimately becoming something tangible you can hold in your hands. I'm rich. Yeah, now I have to pick that up. <laughs> Okay, so I have a couple programs I'm gonna use. I have Photoshop down here. I also have 3D Studio Max, which is the evaluation. It's a 30 day evaluation here. You can see I'm clicking on the continue trial. Sorry, I don't have $185 a month for you guys right now. I'm sorry. There it is, looks so beautiful. And then we have a program in here called NetFab. And NetFab is a cool program used for optimizing objects to make them watertight and 3D printable. And then last but not least, we have Cura. Now, Cura is actually the slicer provided by Ultimaker, but you can use any slicer you want depending on what you're comfortable with. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna open Photoshop here. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a couple of files. You can see here I have a picture of a camera iris, which from the token that you saw earlier, you can see that was implemented into the design. And I have a Vlogger Fair logo. So let's go ahead and open both of those up. Okay, so now what I want to do here is I'm going to take these 2D images and basically extrude them, make them a three-dimensional object, because then later on I can incorporate them into my coin design. So to do that in Photoshop, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and double-click the background and basically tell it I want to convert it to a layer. Now that it's a layer, I'm going to select all of the white that you can see here and just remove it. There we go. Now all the white's removed. So what I want to do now is go up to 3D and say I want to create a new 3D extrusion from the selected layer. Ooh, how cool is that, right? Okay, so now I've got this 3D thing going on here that I can rotate around. It's just basically like large 3D object. I can also come over here and tell it how thick I want it. So we actually don't need it to be super thick. We'll just make it, you know, a medium thickness. We don't really need to be specific here because we're going to be going into the 3D modeling application and fixing this up. So now that I have my iris in 3D, I'm going to go ahead and save this bad boy. What we want to do, though, is we don't want to save it as a conventional file. We want to go over to 3D and say that we want to export it. So export the 3D layer. We want to export it as an STL file. So we're going to go ahead and just put that in the same directory. We'll just say uh, 3D Iris. We'll go ahead and save that as an STL file. That stands for stereolithography. But we want to do something a little different. The problem is I don't want to extrude this dark area. Instead, I just want to extrude the vlogger fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the text here. You can see with the magic wand tool. And I'm going to go up here to select and say inverse. First thing you need to do is create a layer from the background. Double click it and tell it to create a layer. Because now when you do that and you delete stuff, you can see it all deletes nice and neatly and it's translucent in the background. So now we have our vlogger fair right here. So what we want to do is go up to 3D. Again, we want to extrude that layer. Ta-da! And look at that beautiful thing. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. All right, again, we don't need it to be that thick. So let's right click, go ahead and drag it down a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and export this 3D item. And we'll just call it 3D Vlogger Fair Logo. Again, we just want to save it as an STL file. All right, that's, that's fine. And you can specify the size of the object. I don't care. I'm just going to go ahead and resize them in the 3D program. But if you want to, you can actually specify exact dimensions for these items. All right, well, that's all we needed Photoshop for in this demo. Let's go ahead and minimize that. And then we're going to come over to 3D Studio Max. Now, this is an incredibly, incredibly expensive program, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you have billions and billions of dollars. But they had a 30-day evaluation, so I figured, why the hell not? All right, so now that we're inside of the 3D modeling tool, let's go ahead and import our models that we just created. So just go to import here. Say I want to get my 3D iris. So yeah, go ahead and just use the use the default thingamajiggers here. Hit OK. And boom, we have an iris. That's just what we created in Photoshop. That's baller. All right, so we're going to go up to Max, import another item. And this time we're going to import the Vlogger Fair logo. All right. As you can tell, they are wickedly out of proportion because the images were different sizes in Photoshop. So when I saved them, of course, the dimensions were different and I didn't normalize them. So that creates a little bit of extra work for me, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and just shrink it down so that it's like in the ballpark of the Vlogger Fair logo. Here you can kind of see right here. And then we're going to move it. Let's go ahead and move this bad boy right over here. Come on. I just want to move this little bad boy right over here. Yeah. Actually, here, let's center it on the world. And then those should be right on top of each other. All right, well, the iris needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and scale that bad boy up. All right, that looks beautiful. 
So just taking a little, little trip around there, you can see it's extruded out a little bit after the iris. Right on. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink these guys down a little because they're too fat to be a coin. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and smash them down just a little bit. So I'm gonna go on the y-axis. Say ah, I want you to be about that thin. We're just eyeballing everything here. You know this is this isn't a professional video. We're just doing a little eyeballing. All right, and that's what you end up with down here in the corner. And you can also like blow it up full screen so you guys can see when I go around there. You have the Vlogger Fair logo embedded into the iris. Now they are separate polygons at this point, but we'll address that here in a little while. Problem is, that doesn't look like a coin, because a coin usually has a raised edge and is solid. So, like the coin I showed you guys earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to come over here and just say I want to create a cylinder. That's all I want to do, create a cylinder, and I'm going to enable snapping. So I can start right in the center, and I can go, okay, I want to create a perfect cylinder out to here. I don't need it to be super thick, all right? And then I come down here in the parameters. Look, I can even hit control to kind of draw your attention over there. I forgot about that. Damn it, I should have been using that at the beginning of the video. Oh, well. This is, this is my amateur style. All right, so come over here. We're going to increase the number of sides to make it rounder. So you can see, ah, that's pretty round. And then we're going to create a bunch of cap segments. And the reason why we're going to do that is because that's going to allow us to raise the edge. Okay? So you guys with me so far? If not, it's okay. You can rewind and watch this as many times as you want. I promise I won't tell anybody. All right, so we're going to disable snapping. And we're going to move that right about, let's say, about there. So now, when I rotate around here, you can see there's a coin, and then you have the iris embedded, and then the VF on top of the iris. All right, this is starting to look a little bit like a token or a, or a coin. All right, so what we're going to do to create that raised edge is we're going to go ahead and select our token portion, like the little coin portion here. We're going to come over to the modifiers right here, come down and say we want to add, let's see, mesh select, or sorry, edit mesh. And then we're going to say, oh, we want to go ahead and select some faces. And then for our selection tools, we're going to come up here and grab the circle. We're gonna say, go ahead and select everything. And then what we wanna do is we wanna subtract. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. We're gonna subtract the interior. Oops, I subtracted a little too much there. Let's try that again. Okay, so now you can see the only selection is the outer rim. So now I'm gonna come over here and say, I wanna resize it. So scale, scale on the X axis, and I'm gonna create a raised edge. And I want to raise it until it's flush with the front of the coin. Because you want the edge to be about the same as the front of the coin down here. Okay, so now if I do that and I rotate around, let's go ahead and unselect it so you can see. You can now see that the coin has a raised edge. Now, there's a million different ways to do this. This is just like the, simp the simplest way that I was able to figure out in my little period of time. All right, so now that we have this, we want to go ahead and combine these together into basically just one solid object. And the way that you do that in here is you just come over and select compound objects, select an object, and you do something called a Boolean operation. Except for down here, you say you want to do a union. So you click the little union right here, and then you select pick op or MB, you just click another one. And you see now it, it merged those two together into one object. But now the VF needs to be joined into it. So we're gonna go over here and do it again. Go down to compound objects, Boolean, this time we're going to pick Opera and B. We're going to grab the VF. And now the VF has been incorporated into it. You can see you have VF in the front of it and the iris graphics all together. Okay, now since we want the back of the coin flat, all we're going to do is select this guy. Come over here to the modifier list. We're going to add a modifier of edit mesh. All right, we're just going to select the back side of the mesh. Now we're going to add a modifier called slice right here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and rotate our slice here. So that's straight up and down. You can see it goes across the item. And then once we have the slice in place, we just say remove bottom. And you can see it just cut the top piece off. You see that right there? You can move the top of the bottom. So we're just removing that. Now if we rotate our token around, you can see the back is actually all, all hollowed out. Uh, so that's obviously not going to 3D print very well. This is really rough and dirty. To be honest with you guys, I already created this model yesterday, but unfortunately I didn't videotape the process, so we're going through again. So the actual coin I'm printing might be just a little bit different from this one, but I just wanted to show you guys the exact steps that I went through. All right, so now we want to save this thing. So what you want to do is you actually don't want to save the project. You want to export it, and then we want to export it as an STL file, a stereolitho file, and we're going to go ahead and just put it in the same folder as we were for Vlogger Fair right here, and we'll just call it completed coin. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just use default options. All right, so the next step now is we're going to open up NetFab. This is the program that's actually going to fix our part. So let's go ahead and open up. Those are the files for the old Vlogger Fair coin that I'm actually printing. 
Uh, let's go to the completed coin. Now you can see here it has like a big, like, oh my god, this thing's totally screwed up thing. So let's go ahead and add this part. You can see our coin right here. And it's obviously broken. See all the red in the back. It's not a water type model. It's not going to be good for printing. But in this program, you can see a lot clearer because it does black outlining of everything. You, you can kind of see the contrast between how this is a little more raised than the iris and the surface of the coin. So all we're going to do here is use this program to repair it. So we're going to click on this little guy up here, our little health and cure all thing. Click automatic repair, extended repair, and hit execute. That's all we're going to do with this program. Basically, it just ran. Notice how it sealed in the back of the object. So the back of our coin is now completely flat. And it fixed any problems that the 3D printer might encounter. So this is our final, final coin. Oh, another thing that's actually really important here, I don't want to miss this step I did originally, is come down here and click the Apply Repair. It, it already figured out how to repair it, but if you don't apply the repair and you save it, it's not actually going to do anything. So you have to go up to your Project, Export, all right, we're all done. Now we're going to do completed coin fix. You can see I already created one where I screwed up. Hence why I'm correcting this. I love jump cuts in video. Okay, so completed coin fix. We're going to save that, replace it. Now that's our final coin. That's what we're going to print. So now we come over to Cura, which is the software for printing on the Ultimaker, uh, otherwise known as a slicer. It basically takes a 3D object and turns it into, you know, hundreds of layers that then basically emulate a 3D object. Really, all a 3D printer is doing is printing a whole bunch of 2D things on top of each other. So let's go ahead and open up our finished product. So load the model. We're going to go in here to the completed coin fixed. Now you can see that is a huge coin, but it's all watertight. You can see there's no holes in the back. Everything looks good, although we need to lay it down. So what we're going to do here is go into rotate. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the platform, rotate it so it's facing me. Now that's a huge coin. We don't need a coin that big. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale that bad boy down. So down here, you can actually enter the exact millimeters. Let's just say we're going to do like a... Uh, Let's do a 20 millimeter coin. All right, well, all we have is one coin. I'm actually going to make it just a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and do like 19. But the problem is I want to print a whole bunch of these at once. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say multiply. So multiply object. And we want to create, let's say, let's create 12 of them. And there you have it. It, all, it lays them all out so that they're all the proper distance away from each other. So it can print them all at once. And the slicer's done. It says this will take two hours and 27 minutes to print. But I have just demonstrated to you how using those programs, you can very, very quickly take some 2D images, extrude them, overlap them, and make yourself a coin. All right, well, let's take this sucker over to the 3D printer and start printing it out. All right, now for this print, we're going to be using the Ultimaker 2. You can see here it's already been printing for a while. There's one hour remaining. And I always use an SD card to print. That way, if the computer has any problems, it doesn't stop the printer. You can see I really need to clean this thing out. Oh, my God. All right, so here's what we got. These are being printed using a translucent green beta material. It's called XT from ColorFab. And this material will be out soon. It has a very, very high melting point, so these coins, coins will be very durable, and they're not going to melt if they're sitting in your car. That's unfortunately one of the downsides of PLA, is it has a low melting point, and it generally, if you leave it out in the heater in the sun, it gets really soft and we'll have problems. And I know this because I printed some brackets for my car and had that problem. The XT combats that by having better characteristics that stand up to more heat, more like an ABS material. All right, well, let's let these things print for another hour and see what the final product looks like. I think they turned out fantastic. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Here is the end result. We have the big blue, the big silver, the small green. I've got different shapes and sizes. Now you guys see how the whole process works end to end, just taking something as simple as a few 2D images and making them into a cool 3D tangible item in the real world. And no, that ding was actually my Facebook. It wasn't your Facebook. I forgot to turn the audio down. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know if I'm doing a good job. Also, you vote with that like and dislike button. Somehow that, that, that means something on, on YouTube. And by all means, come over to Twitter and tweet at me. I am a hugely social person, but the Google Plus things makes things a little complicated for me. So if you want to talk to me, Twitter's your best bet. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time. Big sound. Or flip the orange.